Hello and welcome to another episode of It Came From The Page. And yes, today we are doing my 800 subscriber special Q&A plus a announcement at the end of this video. I know what announcements, announcing things, what special things, yes. So stay tuned. So I put the thing out on the uh, community tab for uh, YouTube and asked people to ask me questions. So here are what I got. So people wanted me to do a Q&A. Here's your Q's and your A's. If you don't like this, I'm sorry. The questions are great. The answers might not be. Uh, so first off, by the ever lovely Katrina Brown, what are some of your go-to recipes or favorite vegetarian meals? I usually kind of like to keep it simple when it comes to doing meals, uh, especially like, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm getting better at cooking, but I kind of still keep it relatively simple, like, you know, simple squash recipes, simple lentil recipes, uh, you know, doing things like, you know, making potatoes, stuff like that. Like, I, I'm not, I don't do anything super duper fancy yet. Uh, I make a lot of salads and like, pre-package them for the week so that way I have the salads if I need them well obviously I will be eating them <laughs> that's why I make them but uh, if I need them as a quick meal uh, throughout the uh, month so uh, yeah so some of those are probably you know what my go-to vegetarian recipes are just like easier to do things where you just kind of have to get like a little bit of olive oil you just have to split things in half cook it for so long I really like butternut squash uh, and also spaghetti squash, I find I'm really liking too. Uh, and of course, just making lentils. Nothing super, super cool and fancy, but uh, I like them. I like them. Uh, next up, who is your favorite cat child? I, that's, what? All of my children are equal. <laughs> I could do a, the Arrested Development joke where there's that Arrested Development joke where it's like, all of my kids are equal. Then it like cuts to her earlier. I don't care for Job. Uh, but no, I don't have any uh, Jobs in my family. I care about all of my kitties. But to to be fair, my favorite of all time, it's got to be Jughead. My poor dearly departed Jughead because he brought us all together. He's the one who all these kitties are here because they, they old man Jughead wanted to keep them. So he brought us all together as a family. So Jughead is still uh, my favorite cat child. And I lost him earlier this year. And it still makes me sad. Somebody recently commented on, on last year's Garbagist tag video I did. Uh, and it was a nice comment. But uh, I watched it. And the first thing I see was Jughead. And then I look at the comments. And the first comment I see was from Pax. So I was like, oh my god. It was like a double punch in the gut that made me very sad earlier this week. What is a book that got you into reading? Uh, there's plenty of books that got me into reading. Uh, but I'm going to say what really put me down the proper path was reading Carrie in high school. That's when I knew, because, uh, you know, there's earlier books that got me into reading, but they were all fantasy. And fantasy is a boring genre. So I uh, find that uh, I finally got on the right path when I read Stephen King's Carrie in early high school. And I knew the glory that was horror. So next up, uh, this is from Kelly Hooked on Books. Burp, 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 burp. If you had to cast a movie of your life, what actors would you cast as your cats and why? So this is a very important thing to think about. You know what I mean? So this is, you know, got to think about this a little bit. Loomis, I've decided would be Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, just because, you know, you look at Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, he's doing some evil shit in his spare time. Like that guy has like, you know, I could just see him, Benedict Cumberbatch, with like a glass of wine, just being like, <laughs> and like, you know, you know, planning a, to destroy the world and fighting James Bond or something like that. Has he been a Bond villain? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So that gets the evil chaosness of um, of Loomis. Then you go, we got Wisteria. I think Wisteria is kind of like a Aubrey Plaza. Where like, you know, she's actually a sweetheart, but only to me. And she doesn't like anyone else. Not that I know Aubrey Plaza. That, that sounds weird. That sounds that makes it sound like I'm besties with Aubrey Plaza. I've never met Aubrey Plaza, but she seems like one of those people who's kind of like standoffish to most people. But then there's the people she likes, and she's nice to them. So, you know, that's Wisteria to a T. Uh, and then so then we got Nami. Nami is a tough one. Nami is a tough one because uh, she's kind of shy, but she is uh, also you know can be outgoing and snuggly 
um, and is also kind of gets picked on a lot by my other ones. I, you know what? I'm I'm gonna give her uh, Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler is Nami, because uh, you know she gives that uh, that Leslie Nope energy. What just happened there, Loomis? Loomis, what happened there? Bert is uh, Bert Reynolds, obviously, as you can see. You can just see he gives off big Bert energy, uh, and then Claude. Oh, Claude is Claude is tough. Claude is tough. He loves the outdoors. He loves to explore. Let's go with the crocodile hunter. The crocodile hunter would be Claude. He's always out there. And he's like, danger, danger, danger. Uh, I just got to keep him away from stingrays. Um, you didn't have to say, you didn't say they had to be alive. So there you go. Uh, next up from Kelsey from Slime and Slashers. I just said, I just said her name like she was like a holy, like, oh, the Church of Slime. Uh, and uh, the first question is one of the most important questions I've ever been asked, which is, you've just been assigned to your first starship. Which captain would you prefer to serve under and why? Captain Picard or Captain Kirk? So if you don't know, these are two Star Trek captains. Um, and I, you know, it depends on what our mission is, I guess, right? Because, like, if our mission is like, hey, you have to make sure that people don't have wars and all the people are happy and, you know, doing good stuff and be cool and, you know, diplomatic missions, then you're kind of going to want Picard because, like, Picard knows how to actually actually solve problems and you know do mediate things but if you want to be fun bitch you gotta like if you for me i want to hang out with captain kirk man captain kirk knows how to party you know like every single day there is an absolute banger of a party after every episode you don't see it but it's wild all those like illegal gromulan like drugs and stuff like you go like, bam 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 it's gonna be crazy and fun and partying and uh yeah I just think, you know, Captain Kirk, you know, he lives that trashy lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like, I think every day is Garbagus for Captain Kirk. He, like, goes around and he's all like, Oh, yes, this? Of course, I love to read Men's Adventure. It reminds me of that time on Rigel 7-4. And you're like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah. I would have more fun with Captain Kirk, but, like, Captain Picard is a better captain. Because <laughs> he actually, he knows how to solve things without his fists. <laughs> or banging. Uh, that's his. That's Captain Kirk's other main main thing. Favorite Seinfeld episode or quote or moment. Uh, for me, I always like the puffy shirt episode where like uh, <laughs> where Jerry wants to go on onto this talk show and he's got like this puffy shirt that he thinks is great. And he's like, it's the puffy shirt. It's love. It's the puffy shirt. It's cool. And it just it's it's very fun because it's uh it, I it's very funny and I just lo I love the visual. I'm gonna have like an image of the puffy shirt with uh, Jerry Seinfeld on, on it. But I love that one. Um, a favorite book about a cat or cats that you have read. So I so for me it's like I don't know if there's well there there are definitely like nonfiction books I've read about cats that have made me cry. So like Dewey the Library Cat and then there's this book called Strays. Both of those are probably like definitely the best books about cats that I've read. Um, now though both of those are nonfiction. If I was gonna go fiction, uh, probably would go for something like uh, I just finished my first Cozy Cats mystery, um, which was Nacho Average Murder by Maddie Day. Now the cat did not appear like a lot in that, but there was enough very cool cat content that I was just like, oh, this is just charming. Oh, this cat's very cute. I like this. I like the way it was written. I had a good time. And I was like, yeah, that's what I want. Because, like, I love horror books. But every time a cat shows up in a horror book, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like, I love Familiar Spirit by all... But freaking Lisa Tuttle is murking all those cats in that book. Like, that book starts with, like, bam, bam, bam. And I'm like, so many cats are dead now. Um, so, yeah, I, that's why I would I would say uh, I'm going to go with Nacho, Average Murder for Fiction, uh, but Dewey the Library Cat and Strays for Nonfiction. Most underrated horror movie gem in your collection. Uh, sorry, in your opinion, but this is one from my collection. Uh, okay, so this book, this movie is not good. Uh, I'm going to choose a movie called Winter Beast, which is from, I, I watched it from this Homegrown Horrors Volume 1, this Blu-ray set by Vinegar Syndrome, and Winter Beast is awful. Um, it But it has, like, these amazing special effects, and everything is 
so wild and weird and trashy in this book, sorry, in this movie, that it's just awesome. So here, I'm going to just ex- describe to you the, 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 the log line of this. Weird things are happening in and around the Wild Goose Lodge, a snowy inn located in Lura, Massachusetts. Massachusetts, Massachusetts, I can't say that, Mass, in rural Mass. People are being found dead and mutilated, while others are vanishing without a trace. Realizing that the violence might have something to do with Native American black magic and the ancient secrets of the area's historic totem poles, a trio of cops decide to investigate the goings-on and are faced with an array of monstrous ghouls and even a sampling of murderous locals. Uh, a film which truly justifies the term unclassifiable and the sole feature from the writer and director Christopher Thies. Winter Beast was shot on and off for nearly a de- half a decade and is a mix of Super 8 and 16 millimeters, resulting in a one of a kind piece of outsider art horror filmmaking that must be seen to be believed. Loaded with surreal dialogue, mind blowing stop motion animation homemade grower effects, and more than a few genuinely creepy moments. I love this movie. Uh, It is wild. It is trashy. It is perfect. So those are my answers for that one. Uh, Next up, this is from the always lovely Joshua from Coffee, Cats, and King. Alien versus Predator. Who would really come out on top? Whoever is written to. Whoever the writer decides. Uh, Next one. Do you think that... This is a fun one. I like this quote. Uh, Also, I like the Alien vs. Predator who would really come up uh, out on top. Because, you know... I mean... It's, if it's one alien versus one predator, it can go either way. But if it's like a bunch of aliens, they're always going to win. There's a bunch of them. If the alien queen, the alien queen would take them all out. It's the alien queen. All hail her. Yas queen. We love an alien queen. Um, do you think the representation of disabled characters in books has improved in recent years? Some people suggest that if an author isn't part of that representation, then they shouldn't be writing about them. Do you agree? Now, this is always an interesting topic to discuss because uh, I can only speak from my own specific like experience as a, as a disabled person uh, with a brain injury. Uh, and I walk with a cane and I have right side weakness post stroke. So I can't talk, especially, you know, you don't know. I can't really talk for like, you know, a person of color or any, any other, uh, of those, uh, segments of the population. Uh, I can only speak from my own perspective, but I, I do think that, uh, as a whole, it, it has gotten better depending on the genre depending on the quality of the writer. I mean, there's still a bunch of terrible books about disability. Uh, I mean, freaking Gone to See the River Man came out recently, and that book sucked. Um, and... <laughs> I, sorry, I hate that book. <laughs> uh, but there's also uh, a, plenty of books from the modern day that I've read, and I was like, oh, wow, I, I really, really like this. Like, for example, Double Eagle by Dan Abnett. Uh, which is a Warhammer book, but it had like a gl- it had some of the best representation of disability that I've ever read, and that works, even though Dan Abnett is is not disabled. So I think that you definitely can write about these topics if you don't belong to the very specific uh, subset of, of people that you're writing about. Uh, but you have to focus on like you have to find the humanity in the situation. You have to do your research. And especially nowadays, I think, especially if you're writing about another culture or another group of people, you can hire outside firms that will read and kind of that will be people from that culture who will read and talk to you about your work. So you have uh, people that you can do like consultants that you can hire from every or uh, like type of like race, culture, ethnicity, all these things, you can find consultants uh, that you can hire to read your book, pay them obviously, and to to help you to ensure that you are accurately presenting uh, whatever it is. 
Uh, consultants are something that get used uh, a lot in in modern writing by writers who care. And it's it really is from the, the fact of, like, you can do all of your research, but you haven't lived the experiences of, like, say, someone from Iran. So if you're writing about the Iranian perspective, uh, you probably should just hire a consultant who lives and knows a culture and grew up there so they can just take a look for, over your work and be like, oh, this is great, this doesn't actually work, this is what we would actually react like in a situation like this. And it's just, it, it is a good layer to have... Uh, into your work to just make it all feel more real and more cohesive. So I am super pro hiring consultants to look over your work and be like, yo, bitch, this is bad. Um, or, you know, if this is good, here's some more <laughs> things you could add or some differences that you might want to consider. So I, I think consultants are the way to go. And I know a lot of very famous writers do not do it, and it's always known as notable. So it's always like, yeah, you can kind of tell you're not doing them. Um, and then one is, what are some of your favorite flawed but fun horror movies that don't get recommended often? I'm going to go back on Winter Beast, bro. Winter Beast is it, man. Winter Beast is it. And there's also this movie by Don Doler called Night Beast, and it's like the exact same thing. Um, it His hands tear through flesh and bone. And this is a terrible movie, but it's so fun to watch. And the titular Night Beast looks so good. And there's so many great kills. And uh, Don Doler, who directed this, he, if you're ever looking for a good time, watch a Don Doler film, because they are wild and always very, very fun, even though, yes, they are quite trashy. <laughs> and then it's like, any health, work, life updates? So, yeah, uh, you know, things are still kind of being miserable here, health-wise. Like, eh, I've been getting, like, really bad nerve pains recently that have just been, like, sent my already, like... <laughs> grouchy mood like into overdrive um so the nerve pains have been happening which will which really kind of suck uh work wise it's just not a thing that i'm able to do anymore they've done all the tests i got i, I actually went through like a whole bunch of like psychological evaluations like last november and they're basically like yeah you're not going back to work so uh, due to the uh, ounces of brain fog i get uh, especially when i'm trying to concentrate on, on important things never going to be able to work again so i am on disability for the rest of my life which is just how life is um so i am currently still in regina saskatchewan but i kind of want to move because the winters suck here and also i don't know i'm just kind of i don't have any friends around here so you know i would like to move in a place where i can be around people who i know and can talk about but yeah that's just my life i'm the same miserable person just you know more in pain. Next up from Erin, whether it's ghost, drunk, or any other type of Erin's, I'm not sure what she is today, uh, but this is that Erin. Uh, and it's, it's the, and her question is, it's the apocalypse. What is your role in the group? Or are you the lone sociopath taking out single travelers? I've thought about this a lot. I would probably be a con man in the apocalypse. And by that, I mean, I would probably con a very powerful group into being like, I could totally contribute. I'm a computer scientist. I'm great at the computers. I know everything. And they'll be like, well, this bitch has got glasses, so probably. And then I would have just have to figure out how to con my way into surviving so that they don't eat me. Because I think if once the apocalypse happens, no one's going to invite me to the group unless I'm bringing something. And let me tell you, unless it's like cat wrangling, I don't know, I don't know what I'd be bringing to their freaking thing. So I'm just going to be like, yeah, I'm a computer hacker wizard extraordinaire. And I'm like, uh, and I'll just say all those hacker things that they say in 80s movies, and I'm sure it'll be fine. It's the apocalypse. They won't ask me to do anything. Because it's like, I'm expecting, like, most technology to be broken anyway, so I should be like, oh, yeah, I hooked it up to the later and it didn't work. Oh, I'm a sorry, Mr. Giant Cannibal Man. Don't eat me. I can see, look at this cat. It's cute. And he goes, mm, I will not eat you. There's a cute cat. And I'd be like, ha-ha, cat wrangling does work. Uh, next up, how do you, this is from Kelly Hooked on Books yet again, how do you drink your coffee, hot or iced, Dunkin', Tim Hortons, or Starbucks, IDK, what you all have up there. We don't have Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts is way better than Tim Hortons. Anyone who tells you that they like Tim Hortons is lying to you. Tim Hortons is terrible. It's not good. But of course, I drink it a lot. Most people do because it's all that we have around here. But, like, Timmy's is not good. Timmy's sucks. We all know this. Unless you want to sponsor me, Tim Hortons, then I, I love you. Uh, but, yeah, I've been to Dunkin' Donuts a few times, and it's so much better than 
Tim Hortons, like, ooh. Uh, if I'm going for uh, flavor and I have a bit of extra bucks, though, I go to Starbucks. Starbucks, I think, probably has some of the best tasting drinks around, and you can, like, switch it up, and it's fun. Uh, I, I always buy iced. I will I will drink at home when I'm making coffee. I'll drink it warm, but I normally just drink iced coffee because I, I drink pretty fast. I don't want to burn my turn. Uh, Shady Side Library asks the one, the only Shady Side Library. He asks top three favorite authors. This is hard. Uh, you know, this is probably something I should have come up with before now, but it's not. I didn't come up with it. Uh, I'm just gonna we're gonna do this off the top. Uh, Clive Barker, uh, Dan Abnett. And and Poppy Z. Bright. There you go. Those are the top threes. Uh, I've only read one Poppy Z. Bright book, but I, I'm going with it. Uh, next up, this is from Alicia. Rum Tum Tugger teams up with Kelsey to battle Team Richard Gear Border Collie and Criminali. Three rounds. Who wins? So this is a very complicated question. Because, you know, I feel like, you know, both Kelsey and Criminali are two of the nicest people that I've like ever known or ever met, but I think they both, if they're in like a, a fight to the death, I think Criminali reads way too much Men's Adventure to ever go down without a fight. Um, he's got to read them for something. So whatever he's getting out of those books, he, I, he's gonna fight. He's gonna fight. So he's like, oh, I'm so nice and fancy, but then it's like a fight to the like death, and it's like, he like suddenly he like becomes I don't know Edge or whatever the hell those freaking male fantasy characters are. Kelsey's all like, oh, I don't know the ways of the world. I'm so innocent. And then she reads a lot of Richard Lehman. So, you know, if she's living in the rumpocalypse, she's going to bring in the pain. Uh, she's going to, like, if she was, like, in, like, a, you know, a, a battle, I'm sure she'd, like, have, like, a special move with, like, a cigar. And she's like, hey, and, like, burn a cigar in Criminality's eye or something intense. And then Criminality would be like, oh, this is, like, that other men's adventure character. Now I have an eye patch. I'm even more powerful. Um, so it all work out. So really this goes down to Rum Tum Tugger, the cat from Cats, versus Richard Gere as a Border Collie. And Richard Gere as a Border Collie, he's too nice. He's too nice. In a battle, he loses. Rum Tum Tugger takes it for Team Kelsey and Rum. Um, Richard Gere, I, uh, Ollie, I'm sorry. Uh, that Border Collie's gonna fail you in that fight, so. Next up. Beep, 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 beep. This is from Melody, and it has, happy birthday, thank you, thank you. That was two days ago, but she said that on my birthday. Uh, if an author, if an author, blah, 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 if an author offered to write any story you wanted, who would that author be, and what would their story be about? I want the uh, Black Library author, uh, Aaron Dembski-Bowden, to write an alien book. And I don't care what what's in there, but he, he writes some of the best character works and horror stuff that I've read uh, recently, uh, and he writes a whole bunch of Warhammer books, so I want him in the Alien universe because that would be a delectable. Another one from Alicia. What is your favorite book turned movie? So that is interesting. Uh, and the other question is, if Loomis turned human, what actor would be best to portray him? Obviously, Benedict Cumberbatch. We did discuss this before. Uh, but favorite book turned movie... Um, I'm going to say uh, The Shining because I think that the book is so much better than that movie and that movie is amazing. So that's like my favorite thing to talk about is The Shining book versus movie because like they both have all these very interesting things in favor and against them both. Um, so I think that uh, my favorite thing to discuss as far as book and movies are is The Shining and comparing them and being like oh, I hate you Mr. Cooper but your movies are good uh, I hate him uh, <laughs> anyway uh, next one is from Adrian, and she says another happy birthday thank you uh, her question would have been red wine or white wine but looking at the photo she said I you can see I made it my choice so I was drinking red wine in the photo uh, but here's the thing I don't have class or taste. I drink whatever's cheapest. Next up, by the wonderful Michael K. Vaughn. What novelization deserves a Folio Society edition? This is an interesting proposition. A 
because what you need is you need to argue about a novelization that would sell well enough that using uh, the Folio Society styling, which is awesome, they have some great looking books, uh, would be worth it for them. And mine is The Thing by Alan Dean Foster. One, because that book is overpriced as hell online. Um, and it had multiple printings. Even back in the day, it was a popular novelization because I believe there have been three printings of that for novelizations that's super rare. So obviously people are interested in that. The The price that it goes for online indicates that people would still want to read that and still would pick up a better version, like a more fancy version of that. And two, it's my it's a talented foster. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. So those are all the questions I got. I'm sorry, they were weird. Um, I, I'm sorry if my answers were weird. It's, you know, it's me. What'd you expect? But the announcement... <laughs> After hitting 800 subscribers, I've decided to start my own Patreon. In the uh, episode description, you will see uh, a link to my Patreon. I've just started a Patreon. There is only one tier currently. I only think I'm going to have one tier, and I'm going to include everything I want to do in, in that one tier. Uh, I've just been kind of thinking about this for a little bit. Uh, and also, because there are things that I would like to do that I currently cannot save up to do so you know going to visit people maybe trying to see if it's ever going to be feasible for me to do um like snowboarding which in canada is what we call somebody who's like gets out of the winter for a few months um and for me during the winter like my body is like really in pain so like it's like for medical reason i, I kind of want to try snowboarding so for all those reasons i thought hey you know what i'll try to do a patron i think uh it might be fun it might be good uh and you might be thinking what will you get if you do my patreon uh, i will tell you uh what you will get if you go into the loomis tier which is the only tier currently uh one is is a new movie club I am putting together, which is going to be a weird movie club where every month I will give everyone a, a weird movie and have some people I give you the options to like vote on what weird movie we will watch and discuss. Um, now, I haven't decided if we will all watch that together, if there'll be like a watch party or it will be something where you go watch it on your own and then you can come back and p participate in like the uh, end of the month uh, kind of like a, a group discussion about it. Uh, so whether or not there's just the uh, on the channels on the Discord. Yes, bitch, there's a Discord. That the other one, I made a Discord. I thought I would never ever do it, but it actually was pretty easy and it's not, it's not bad. So I made a Discord. So you get access to the Discord. Um, and then uh, the Weird Movie Club. I just feel like uh, there's so many book clubs right now and I think that a Weird Movie Club, people can actually still fit that in with all the other things. So I didn't want to add another book club, but I thought a, a Weird Movie Club might be worth it to people and might be interested in that because I've had a lot of fun with, uh, you know, recommending movies to people, recommending movies to watch on live with people and stuff like that. So yes, then there's the Discord. Uh, there will be uh, monthly reading sprints. Uh, I will never do a public reading sprints again. I hate, uh, hate, I hate doing sprints when it's the public. I only want to sprint for a very smaller number of people. So that's why I think Patreon is probably the best bet for that because then I can just, I can run a sprint and if I'm feeling bad one day, I can just say, hey, I don't want to sprint. There's no pressure about it. Um, and we could just make that work and you'll get one of those at least once a month, probably do that more. And also I'll probably be participating and hanging out with other people on maybe their other Patreon, uh, sprints and stuff like that. So you might be able to get into those, uh, if they're okay with it. Um, but, uh, so that's one, that's another one of the things that, uh, will be done. And then also there is going to be a brand new podcast I do with Kelsey from Slime and Slasher, where we're just going to start going through random movie series and kind of chatting with them and having a Google podcast with them. Uh, and I thought that would be a fun thing to do. Uh, Kelsey is my bestie. So, uh, I thought that would be fun. So I will, uh, there'll be also that, uh, if you join now, uh, just so you know, there is a few things that I kept. So this used to be a Patreon. Uh, I've all, I've completely retooled it, retooled everything. It was a very unpopular Patreon back in the day for a podcast I used to do. Uh, and I went through and I deleted most of the things that were associated with that podcast. But I did keep up a few of those old episodes if you're interested in looking at those old Patreon episodes. And there are stuff that I think that people who... Uh, like this channel might be interested in. So if you go now, you'll see a few things called Triassic Park. 
those are just a old movie podcast I used to do with my friend Jason, and uh, we had a Patreon and we did some things there. So I kept some of those uh, old episodes up if you really found yourself interested in in those. So you obviously, I'm still going to be doing uh, at least a video or two every week here. Um, and just anything, little extra stuff would be doing stuff on Patreon. So if you want to and you can, you you. Thank you so much for supporting me on that. But if you can't, you don't have to. It's completely fine. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys for 800 subscribers. And I hope you guys have a great day. Goodbye.